relative to uh, our recent meeting and presentation by Dr. Amanda Hall. Um, we have uh, before you about what, 11 or 12 very, uh, communities that have adopted uh, similar type ordinance, the various wordings of those uh, ordinances uh, for your consideration. Um,
charge of animal control. Yeah, you have two different ordinances. You have the city ordinance, the county ordinance, but the animal control officers uh, respond to both. So they don't they don't make a distinction. It's all of we got the whole shooting match. And so that's why those people are constantly on the run from one to the next to the next. And a good bit of it can be nonsense. Here's a copy of the animal control order. You say that? You got it. There's a section in here on cruelty to animals, and it deals with that. Uh, <clears throat> there's a proper way to tether, and there's an improper way to tether. Yesterday, when I was in town coming back to the house, my daughter called me and said when she got home, there was a note on her door, front door, that the water in the dog bowl in her backyard was dirty, and they needed to furnish that dog with clean water. And it came from an officer at the animal control center. Somebody had called and complained because she's got a dog in heaven. And that's all he could find. Him. I visited the center there on your arm and talked to him about it. He said, yeah, you know, it's been raining and whatnot, but I just went and looked and I had to write a report. He said, that's the best job of tethering a dog I've ever seen. There's a dog house there. There's a dog food bowl there. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think there's y'all probably are ways of doing it. And, there's, right. and I think what you're going to find is some of the examples of ordinances here that you might that addresses this. To me, there's there's three issues. And by those three issues, as you move from one, you cross the line into the next concern. Tethering is not a big issue as long as, as you say, if tethering is done and done properly, tethering is fine. That's the way, you know, some folks can keep their, their animals under control. But once you move from tethering to move into a situation to where the, the, the process of tethering itself begins to alter the personality of that animal, you begin to move into another issue. When you begin to create a situation that you are moving over to a dangerous dog situation with dogs of it being chained, tethered, or whatever, that's one concern. The big one is that when you take that jump just as you say into Part that become an animal cruel. To me, that's that's when it gets it. The ordinance addresses animal cruelty, absolutely. But then you wait until you have the act of animal cruelty before you act, or do you do something for that particular thing to prevent you from having to get into animal cruelty? So that's part of what we're going to have to look at. And I think that looking at some of these examples that you've got. You're going to find that there are ways to address tethering and doing it properly and then the improper ways. Uh, because I think that the, most of the folks that you hear from that are, let's just say, the anti-chaining, anti-tethering individuals, they don't like tethering because they know it moves through those processes. It moves into that personality altering situation type thing you would eventually get there. But reality is they're more concerned about the part of the animal getting into the animal cruelty area. Where when the when the animal control officer is called, there's some poor animal out there that's got a chain, and I'm not talking about a log chain in this case, I'm talking about any little chain, any kind of little cable, string, no matter what it is, it's either around his neck and it's about to die or either it's already cut off the circulation to a limb to a point to where the animal has to be euthanized or it has to be, a leg has to be taken off of you know, that limb. So those are the things that they're really concerned about. They see them, these doctors see those animals coming from the animal shell and coming to their offices and they have to deal with it when they know that it's something that can be prevented if there was some, some enforcement in what we currently have that we address. This, uh, this addresses that, this ordinance. This is a really good document. You read it? It's the one from another county. I this one, this is Lambs County, May 23rd, 
2006. And it gets explained about chaining or tethering. It says it shall be unlawful for any person to chain or tether an animal to a stationary object for a period of time or under conditions that an animal services officer or law enforcement officer deems harmful or potentially harmful to the animal. Examples of improper chaining or tethering include but are not limited to the following. And it's about using a logging chain on a little dog mm -hmm. or a choke collar on a chain and all that. I'm not against, uh, well, I am against chaining a, a dog to a pine tree where he's dug a hole out there and picking up into the and mule in and it's, the grass is gone and it's just a mess. Mess everywhere and all that. I'm really against that. But properly done, like you said, I don't say it's a problem. If what? it's properly done, it's not, probably not going to go into that next stage if that person is taking care of it like that. What we found in court is that we need to beef that up a little bit where it says, or otherwise, we need a better definition specifically to be following for the judge to be able to enforce that. Yeah, that's a pretty good document. Uh, 2006, I think did. That document was created uh, in conjunction between the Humane Society and the Animal Control uh, a Committee uh, that uh, chaired the case and myself, uh, Linda, in conjunction with the Animal Control, I mean, with the uh, Humane Society, come up with. Uh, but I think Dr. Paul mentioned the other day exactly what Mark was saying that there is a way in the and the clock mm -hmm. you might call for comment. So yeah. I don't think that there is a discrepancy in what he's saying yeah. now and what she was saying. Yeah, well if we had you know if, we, if the ordinance is already in place, then I think that what going back to what Peggy said is that Enforcement as well as the judicial system needs a little bit clearer, cleaner definition of what tethering or chaining is so that they will have a clear understanding of where they need to be at. What well, if, if, I'm sorry, I'm going to say, if, if, if we went to say the stringent mode that you're saying in the case, I would, I would be more inclined to uh, support what we call a no kill status designation for. For our veterinary, I mean, uh, for our, our animal control, because at the end of the day, uh, uh, animals, you know, y'all know me, I'm, I'm against, you know, animals getting uh, euthanized, to be honest with you. I, I don't believe animals should be killed because, one, they don't decide how they get here either. Uh, but I do have the mindset to understand that if you got a couple bad apples, you don't necessarily spray the whole community with it. And I'm just looking for uh, some type of midway. For those who do lawfully do what they're supposed to do and not have to risk their dollar going to the animal shelter to get put to sleep because that's what's going to happen if somebody can claim them over uh, a week or two. And even if they do claim them, they pick them up just to take them back to the same condition or you know, uh, put them on the chamber because they're in the yard or what have you because they ain't trained. Because it takes some training with a dog. We, we do know this. And then if you, you still can't train them, it really comes down to personal responsibility at the end of the day. It's a controlled deal. Um, that, that's my concern, because I know in California they got no kill uh, designation um, status for those uh, animal shelters, but that gives an option. Well, I think Paige can probably add a good bit more information there, but I don't want to kind of throw this out anymore. I, 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 you know, I think that probably less than five years ago, um, the, the adoption rate, rescue rate at the pound was like in, I'm going to just say, 20 animals. They were very, very small. Now, because of their efforts and because of the public service announcements that pays does and staying on top of these issues and the spay and neutering program and the adoption program and the education that's out there, I think their numbers are up near 3,000 mm -hmm. that they're adopting out of that, that they're now not having to euthanize. You can't, the problem is you can't just bring animals in, and the, and the more denser situation is, you bring these animals in there, you can't just keep them alive at the animal shelter. 
you either have to adopt a now or you have to have some system in place. If you have to make that sad, tough decision that if the animal can't be adopted, it's not going to be rescued, too ill, too injured, you have to make a decision at that point in time to do the tough thing that they have to do. That, that's, that's my concern. It's just that, that the person that is doing the right thing, but the current standards are following the law with, with technology. Uh, when they take the dog, when the dog gets picked up, you got to pay that fee, that's fine. And then you got to start building the fence or either being able to keep them in the house. If you ain't got that money, they're they going to be picking your dog up the next day or either your dog on one of the road and then they can pick your dog up. Well, I think that goes back to what, what, I'm, what I'm looking for in, in something like this is a good, clear understanding of proper tethering techniques. I don't, I'll go on record and say that, that I don't like tethering. I'm not going to have an animal if I have to tie it to a tree just to make it stay in my house. That's not what I'm going to do. But at the same time, there's some folks that that's what they have to do. Now, as long as that can be done and it can be humanely done, properly done by a certain set of standards and guidelines, that's the way we've got to look at it. Chaining a dog to a pine tree and that dog not getting to his food and his water and can't even get the shelter when it's raining or cold, that's a whole different issue. That's an example. <coughs> this proper tethering is like a zip line. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And it's all along the lines. And if you get to his house and you get to his food and all that, he's not going to wrap around a tree or get choked or anything like that. And they can exercise. And they can and exercise. And in Wendy's case, when, when my grandson comes home from school, first thing he does is go inside, put his books down in the backyard, takes the dog off, and plays with it on. Yeah. Till an yeah. hour. When that was first written, the tethering issue was not uh, at a residence. You recall it was tethering in the back of the truck. That's right, it states that. And that was the most heated controversial issue when that came about because you saw so many people riding around with their dog in, their, in the back of the truck and it was standing on toolbox. Tool 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 and it was running really this, leaning this way and this way back and forth. Uh, they were talking about if it falls out and it hangs itself and all that kind of issue. So with y'all's approval, I think that if you review what's proposed, in conjunction with what you already have and determine A, if you want something that has uh, a better definition and if so, what that definition would be from the options you have or something else. Right. And I think, I think that's, you know, I think that's real good so, uh, I think the first to show you, I receive a lot of feedback from the community uh, and, and especially in unincorporated areas and, a lot of them feel like they're being targeted, to be honest with you. And it's mainly because, you know, they, they live in mobile homes in a lot of these areas. And a mobile home, you don't find fences with a mobile home. So you generally don't find a dog living inside. And it just so happened in the corporate areas, you have a lot of mobile homes. So, you know, I, I just don't want anybody to feel that way. Well, well, yeah. and, and we'll, we'll move on, but I, I think the real key is here. I'm not sure that we're ready as, as a community to say no to it. I think that we have a responsibility as a commission and as a community to make sure that if tethering is done, is that it is done properly. You know, take that individual. I mean, they can take, there's many pine trees in, the <coughs> in this community. You can run a line between them. You can put a zip line. You can properly do a tethering system if, if that's, if you need to do it. But that's part of the responsibility of those to accepting the responsibilities as a pet owner. Is that before you pick that dog, you need to be able to say, okay, if you're going to stay in the house, if you're going to stay in the fence yard, what do I have to put in a tennis? That's part of the responsibility. Can you put up a car? <coughs> exactly. Can you put Yes, ma'am. I appreciate the compliment on the efforts of the numbers. I just have the information wrong. I want to make sure that everyone understands that those numbers 
are related to a tremendous amount of work um, as it relates to our Admiral Director, Linda Matelski and her staff. They work and do things that they aren't necessarily part of the job description to work these recipes and get these animals out of the shelter so that they're not even us. So that's been something that Mr. Pritchard's had to work their workload around so that there's time to do these things. In addition to that, our local animal rescues and our social media networking has really stepped up to pull a lot of these animals out of the shelter. And then we also have rescues like um, the Rescue Division of the Humane Society as well as BARC. And they're the ones who are raising the funds to be able to pull the sick and injured out so that they don't have to be euthanized. So I just wanted to make sure that there's such a big, you know, a big piece there that it takes everybody working together that you all understood how those numbers have really gotten down. I think that this week in the Humane Society has a fundraiser. Um, a large part of the money that they raise does go to um, their training program, which helps with our population so that we don't have so in the shelter as well as rescuing the sick and injured animals. So anyone who has an opportunity to support them, I would certainly encourage that. And I agree. I mean, we all know there's a tremendous amount of passion around pet ownership. I, mean, I tell the story with some experience to some of this stuff. Uh, my mother was in her late years of life and had cancer, but she had a little black dog that I used to joke to my brother and I said, Mama left the dog on she does you and I. <laughs> You know, and that was, I, I, I go to my grave believing that. At that point in her life, she had a tremendous amount of love for that dog because that was her companion. That's all she had. Well, she had a little tethering system out back, and she goes out there one morning and pushed the little dog out and goes back in the house. Well, <clears throat> inevitably, um, three pit bulls get out of the fence area next door. And when she hears the commotion, it's basically too late. They maul her little dog. Well, the issue was there before she grabs him up, takes him all the way to Gainesville, spends all the money she can to try to save the dog. He lays on her couch in the living room for about three days and eventually passes away. And the real issue is here is that it just, to me, it, it broke my mother's heart. But three weeks later, she passed away. She couldn't live without the little dog. I mean, that's just really the broken heart issue. But these things are real life things, and, and the folks when you get involved with them, you have a tremendous amount of passion with your pets. And then it's not only your pet, it's any pet, any animal. You know, so I, I get my arms around that issue, but I also know, Mr. Marshall, just as you're saying, there's issues as well with the fact that some folks have limited resources. They, they have to do some things if they want a pet. But I'll come all the way back around and say that if you go along with pets and have pets, there is responsibility that goes along with it. And that's the point right there that we make this step. I said, if you're going to have pet ownership, if you're going to put them on a chain, on a tether system, there is a proper way to do that. And I think that that's eventually where we as a commission, through that ordinance, are going to have to clarify what proper way of heading to do it. And I think that's the best step to do this issue. Are we going to see this money? This issue? No. 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 Is it? Yeah, this is still going to be a It's not, it's not scheduled. No. Uh, what I was suggesting, suggesting is after y'all have had time to uh, analyze what you have on the uh, if y'all give me direction, then until then it won't be back up on the agenda. Well, we're thinking about this condition. Uh, so, can we say that certain breeds cannot be changed? To? No. Vicious, I don't know. vicious slash attack dogs. I, you know, to me, I've been in houses that I thought a little chihuahua was a vicious attack oh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see it's a pretty bad song. But you were saying earlier. Take that certain breed and put him out. No, there. no, no, no. Let me clarify. I didn't say certain breed. No. To me, you any take dog, a dog. Any yeah. dog. There's a certain change. Certain breeds that will get more aggressive. It will alter, it will alter their personalities. I would encourage y'all as y'all study this and you want to uh, formulate your ideas. Uh, Dr. Hall will make herself available to answer those kind of questions. Uh, for y'all, 
and uh, as an expert witness, so to speak, to provide you that information. And uh, we can give you any information related to the animal uh, shelter, animal control, and so forth. But this is really just a decision that you feel you best can represent your constituency, including the case. The next item, Mr. Chairman, is not only